Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is going to be another tale of rags to riches, where we're going to talk about how a small idea established itself as a brand to reckon with. If we begin by saying the name of a Swedish businessman, Ingvar Kamprad, it might not ring any bells in your mind. Which is why, let us rather start with talking about a furniture store, which makes you buy things that you thought you didn't need. Thanks to its influence, goodwill, an immense variety of products it has to offer. Didn't think you needed that cute little study table when you actually just went to buy a chair? Congratulations! You're walking out of the store with a chair and a brand new study table. And who doesn't like shopping when they're being offered Swedish meatballs on their way out? After all, snacking and shopping always go hand in hand. By now, you must have realized that we're talking about one of the world's biggest brands, IKEA. Of course, you might have forgotten the seemingly unimportant name we mentioned at the beginning, Ingvar Kamprad. Well, today, we're going to be talking about how IKEA, the brainchild of Swedish entrepreneur Ingvar Kamprad, came into existence and has been growing ever since. Like the lion's share of most successful entrepreneurs who came from humble beginnings, Kamprad was no different. His roots was in the Swedish province of Småland, one of the several rural Swedish districts where people were already realizing that supporting families by farming on stony land was not going to work by the time baby Kamprad was born. His mother and father were two of many people who were looking for other options for sustaining a livelihood. His mother had established a guest house, while his father owned the largest country store in the town of Almud. Maybe it was because he was influenced by Swedish values of hard work and egalitarianism. Young Kamprad was eager to support his family in whatever way he could. He started his first business by selling matches at the age of five. By the time he was 10, the young businessman was going around in his bicycle, buying things like Christmas supplies and notebooks in bulk and selling them in nearby towns. Good with numbers and a quick learner, he figured out what customers needed and sold the items at low prices, which increased the demand for his products. A signature business move that went on to become a part of the IKEA marketing scheme as well. It's fascinating to see how some of the biggest entrepreneurs of today started earning for themselves at such a small age. Maybe it's the common trait to recognize a future success. Who knows? In spite of all he did, and being dyslexic, Compound maintained a good scholastic performance as well. IKEA was established by the money 17-year-old Comprod's father gave to him as a reward for his good performance. He named IKEA by using his initials followed by the E for Elmarted, the family farm he grew up on, and A for Agunarid, his home village. The first IKEA started selling household goods, like pens, frames, and wallets. Now a college student, Comprod wanted to look for further options that offered him a better deal. Within two years, he was using mail trucks to deliver the products. During that time, the countryside was rapidly changing. It was the post-war period and the Swedish government had built lots of housings and were providing home furnishing loans. Ingvar decided to carry out a sensible experiment by selling furniture made by local manufacturers to keep up with the high demand for home furnishings. Thus, IKEA's journey of selling furniture pieces began in 1947. From the very beginning, Ingvar began following the policy that he had been following since childhood. Low prices to attract more customers and create greater demand. IKEA's first iconic catalog came out in 1951, with prices so low that the customers were doubtful about the quality. Comprod rented out an old workshop to display the products and, as expected, people came in and sales rose. In 1955, manufacturers began protesting about the low prices that Comprod offered, which forced him to design and build his products in-house. IKEA's revolutionary idea of flat packing took birth, which saved customers and IKEA quite a lot of money. Thus, in less than 10 years since the company was established, the present-day idea of producing and showcasing flat-packed, affordable in-house design, simple furniture was ingrained in the company. Unsurprisingly, Compron's business expanded at a great pace. Within less than a decade, people were crowding IKEA stores all over across Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and other Scandinavian countries. IKEA spread worldwide throughout Japan, USA, and Europe, and has 433 stores across 38 countries today. Not only did IKEA stores spread on the map, so did its popularity, with over 80,000 people visiting the first IKEA store at Shanghai on its opening day. Throughout its expansion, Ingvar Kamprad kept the entire business private, 
Even the several offshore trust funds were strictly owned by Comprod himself. This elaborate ownership not only placed Comprod on the worldwide rich people list, but in a way ensured that the company stayed out of major financial losses and monetary disagreements. Allegations of poor customer service, intensive labor practices, and bad environmental policies have come up against IKEA at times. But it has dodged anti-corporate sentiments remarkably well till date, which has saved the brand image from being tarnished. Is there room for expansion? Of course, till now only a quarter of the world is a part of the IKEA global market, and it wouldn't be a big surprise if the company tries to exploit its potential of expansion. Unlike many other businesses, it's been growing even during the pandemic and has seen a 200% increase in job listings since the past six months. Another great reason why this company is a favorite spot for shoppers is its marketing style. The products are named according to a system. Beds are named after places in Norway. Kitchen tables have got their names from Finnish places. Glasses and cups are adjectives. Rugs have Danish names and so on. The system strikes a chord with people from that specific country and piques the humor and interest of the rest. After all, who doesn't want to buy an item that has an exotic name? IKEA's first brochure in 1948 promised that it would offer more if customers showed reasonable interest. They definitely did, and so did Comprod's company provide for them. Ever since its birth, it has maintained and refined the founder's vision of creating a better everyday life for the many people. And that is how a clever-minded college student attempting to help his family created a business that changed thousands of lives through home furnishing but there's no time limit to start a venture through hard work, which you can start on even today. Do let us know how Comprod's story and business ideas inspired you in the comment section down below, because we would love to hear from you. Also, if you loved the video, do not forget to click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. We will be back with another video for you all before you even realize that we were gone.